Hi, I'm Andrew Griffiths from the Planet Mark and today we're going to be answering your most common internet searches about net zero carbon. First question that comes on the autocomplete for what is net zero is what is net zero emissions? Now the best way of describing this one is actually to draw a little chart. To go from 100% to 0% basically means that the line comes all the way down and it touches the line. Net zero basically acknowledges that for most organisations getting to true zero is going to be very, very difficult or downright impossible because if you're making a product or something, your line is actually going to look more like this. And so you see there's still a bit of a gap between zero, down here at true zero, and this line. And so what net zero carbon means is basically you are offsetting the difference between the total amount of carbon that you've still got left because you're making a product or you have a service that cannot avoid some form of carbon emission and you're using carbon removal offsets to offset that last bit. What is the difference between net zero carbon and carbon neutral? With carbon neutral, you're allowed to offset essentially the whole lot. So you, you let's say I work out, I've got a thousand tons of carbon that I use as a business um, and I can pay for a thousand tons of carbon offsets, either avoidance or removal, and I can offset the whole lot. Whereas with uh, net zero, I'm only allowed to offset this last little bit here, which is usually, uh, usually less than 10% of uh, where you began. What is scope one, two, and three? So you can think of scopes one and two as the fuel you burn and the energy that you use. So it's mostly your utility bills and any fleet of cars and vehicles that you own. Scope three is everything else. For net zero, you really do want to be delving into scope three because it tends to be 90 to 95% of most organizations' footprints. What is the UK net zero target? The UK is one of the only countries in the world to have set a net, a, a, an official legal net zero target for 2050. So 78% reduction by 2035, totally net zero by 2050. <laughs> Okay, on to the next question, why net zero? Why are companies committing to net zero carbon targets? Companies are playing their part. In short, they're setting these net zero carbon targets because they recognize they've got a part to play in this um, and because they have to anyway, because in the UK, you've got to be net zero by 2050. Why is net zero, zero emissions so important? Parts of the planet could become unlivable if we don't reduce our carbon emissions as a, as a, you know, as a planet uh, and as a species. And so that's why net zero emissions is so important, to reduce our carbon, reduce global warming and reduce climate change. Why do we need to reach net zero by 2030? The answer really is the sooner the better. Um, the earlier we achieve net zero emissions, the less or the consequences will be for us in terms of the climate change effects that we're going to experience. Why are net zero energy buildings so important? So net zero energy buildings are really important because of the footprint that they have. Heating the buildings, cooling the buildings, lighting the buildings, um, all uses carbon. And so switching our buildings to use renewable energy sources, um, locking carbon into the construction of those buildings and making sure that we're reducing the amount of emissions that go into their construction and their ongoing operational emissions is, is super important. How? So first most in searched answer question was, how do you get started with net zero? So the first thing you want to do is, is measure where you're starting from. So you've got to understand your baseline and then uh, use that to come up with a target that you feel is ambitious enough and realistic enough for your organisation to achieve. How does a company achieve net zero emission? A company achieves net zero by reducing their carbon footprint by as much as possible, usually as much or more than 90% of their original baseline. And then they use carbon removal offsets, so planting trees, um, peatland, seagrass, things that suck carbon out of the atmosphere um, for the last little bit um, so that they get fully to net zero. How will my company benefit from net zero? There's financial benefits, which might be cost savings. It might be accessing grants or funding or new business. 
um, as a result of going on your net zero journey. But you can also get reputational benefits, um, which means that people like you more. Basically, you might retain your staff better. Um, you may, may gain good positive publicity um, and other forms of, of reputational and brand benefits to, to, to net zero. The third benefit is resilience benefits. It's been demonstrated time and time again through the pandemic um, and before that organisations who embrace sustainability tend to fare better in times of, uh, of trial and tribulation. How are other businesses achieving net zero? Other businesses are doing it by looking at what they do, understanding their carbon footprints and, and where their scopes of emissions lie. Um, and then they're focusing on coming up with initiatives and projects that help them to reduce that carbon. And of course, another way that many businesses are achieving net zero is by working with Planet Mark. <laughs> Shameless plug. Is the UK on track to reach net zero? Is the UK on track to reach net zero by 2050, which is the official legal target at the moment? Um, I would say yes, broadly, but much more ambition is needed. We need to be including more things in our targets um, to, to make sure that we're including all of our emissions and not just some of them. And also arguably we should be aiming earlier than 2050 as, as the net zero target. And I certainly hope that we will see in the coming years massive raises of ambition in our net zero targets, um, potentially even at COP26 this year. Is net zero possible? Of course it is. You know, through programs like our Zero by 30 program, people are able to really specifically plot out their whole journey to net zero so that they know what they're doing this year, next year, next year, next year, next year, right the way through to whatever their target is. So yes, it's possible and we all need to get there as fast as humanly possible uh, to create a sustainable future for us all. We finished? All done?